Another week of Doc Talk. News on COVID this week has been relatively good. Uh, if you're in our northern uh, parts of the hemisphere, not as good um, because uh, in our northern states, in Canada and in Alaska, um, still a lot of COVID patients, a lot of COVID moving through. I've talked to you before that COVID is in the Delta variant now is almost heat seeking, uh, looking for uh, populations that are not immunized. Uh, and so for all of us, uh, particularly fire EMS, um, we're, we are high up in the hot zone uh, in terms of catching uh, COVID uh, as it moves through the communities. In the Southern uh, areas of the country, uh, and now moving through the Midwest and the coast are relatively smaller numbers of cases. So nationally, that's good news that our case counts are going down, our hospitalizations are going down, our deaths unfortunately still are not going down. That's the last thing that begins to be impacted. And in some of my communities, our morgue areas are still full unfortunately of COVID patients. Um, so that's the way that we, we watch this move through. Really good news this week. We're going to talk about vaccines and treatments. Vaccines and treatments. For any disease that you ever have, for any disease that has ever occurred in the human in humankind, it is always preferable to prevent the disease rather than try to treat the disease. Prevent first, treat if prevention doesn't work. The nature of all of our work in, in fire EMS for all these years prevent fires, prevent traumas, prevent cardiac arrest, prevent strokes, prevent pneumonia, prevent inhalation injuries by wearing self-contained breathing apparatus, prevent burned firefighters by getting really good PPE, prevent cancer by not being exposed to products of combustion. Always better to prevent than try to go in and rescue, okay? So let me talk just for a short bit about what is coming out as treatments. Uh, Molnupiravir, Molnupiravir uh, is a treatment uh, that uh, was uh, developed by Merck and was handed to the FDA this week in an attempt to find treatments uh, that may work uh, for patients who have gotten coronavirus. As with all antivirals, uh, they had relatively small patient groups. Uh, they found that this medicine, uh, which is a lot of pills, you take uh, four uh, tablets uh, per day for five, twice a day. So eight tablets a day for five days, that's swallowing a lot of pills. Uh, they found it reduced the number of patients who were hospitalized, but didn't eliminate it. Um, so that's kind of comparable to use in some of our other antiviral drugs. Uh, when you get other things like flu and, and uh, those types of diseases. Let's talk about vaccines, which are much more highly effective. The news this week, we are over six and a half billion, billion, billion doses of vaccines that have been given worldwide. The ones uh, that have been delivered in the Americas here uh, have been the most effective. Uh, so we're talking about the Pfizer, the Moderna, the Johnson & Johnson have been amongst the most effective on the planet. We're working on third doses and when those are appropriate. And now we're discussing this week at the FDA whether second doses of a J&J &J vaccine, for those of you who received J&J, &J are, are um, scientifically effective. Frankly, uh, this morning's news is J&J &J is your first dose and Pfizer or Moderna is your second dose may even be a better boost to your immune system. So that's the news we're going to hear over the next week in the vaccine world uh, for COVID about our available vaccines in America, about third dosing Moderna, and about second dosing uh, after your first uh, shot was J&J. Uh, &J. The other really big news uh, is children. Children uh, are likely uh, to be, by the time we get to Halloween, approved for vaccines from Pfizer. Uh, it will move through the committees of the FDA and the CDC over the next couple of weeks. And likely uh, by Halloween or maybe the first week of November, the Pfizer vaccine at a lower dose than for adults uh, and in a two-shot series given at least three weeks apart, 
uh, will be available for children down to age five. Now, why would you wanna give a vaccine to children? Number one, they are affected by COVID, although at a relatively uh, less risk than older people. Nonetheless, they get sick from it. Nonetheless, there are kids in the hospitals from it. And in particular for kids who are at risk uh, with a variety of other congenital and, and younger person problems, uh, they can die. Number two, little children are breeding grounds uh, for infections. And when they get infections, they can send them off uh, to the adults, to their caregiver, elder grandparents, uh, to other people in the family or the household. A very unfortunate report this week, one in 500 children in this country have lost a caregiver since the beginning of COVID. One in 500 children have lost a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or uncle, if, if that was included in the caregiver unit, um, they have lost that individual to dying, not, not illness, not long COVID, they have died. That's a tremendous impact on children. Um, and some uh, groups of uh, people, um, including in particular our Native American population, uh, that impact has been even higher. Uh, so unfortunately, children can produce variants, and we always are concerned about all of the, the viruses going through children that they can get worse, and they can be passed on to the people who are older that take care of them or live with them. Uh, number two, they get sick themselves and can die and then give it to uh, their teachers and other people that they interact with. As we look at any diseases and through the ages, you know, whether it's smallpox, whether it's polio, which was a scourge at my age, um, we, wanna, we want to immunize the entire population. As we move through the vaccine development, we will eventually get to a point where children will be immunized to coronavirus, there's no doubt. By that time, they hope it will be available like a polio dose in a sugar cube. And kids will get it in their, in their very early ages. Uh, a very safe, effective vaccine that's been given now for many years after polio used to just wipe people out, particularly children out. Um, and now we don't even think about polio uh, because that vaccination uh, program that has occurred across the globe has essentially wiped out polio as a scourge of people across the globe. We're hoping the same for coronavirus, but for now, um, the vaccination of children uh, down to age five will be done at a lower dose, at an effective dose, and it's been very safe in the pediatric population. I've already had some of our firefighters uh, who have taken their kids and had them immunized. Um, they, they, they're thrilled that that's available. And in particular, those where, where the older people in the, uh, in the house are more at risk, uh, they really wanted their children to be immunized. So exciting vaccine news uh, with the potential of getting uh, third doses uh, available across a wide population, uh, getting the down to age five age group immunized. Boy, if we could get those kids to where they don't have to wear masks at school, we'll be all the better off. Also this week, one quick point. Flu vaccines are available. Will we need flu vaccines this winter? We likely will. And I'm gonna cover this more next week, uh, but planning for and getting your flu vaccine this year will be a really good idea. Uh, and number two, if you haven't been coronavirus vaccinated and you haven't been flu vaccinated, you can get them both at the same time. So that's essentially a needle in either arm uh, at the same time. Uh, and the effects of that are fine no higher complication rate that they have found yet. And as we have had a number of articles published this week about the safety of our 6.5 billion doses of vaccine for coronavirus that have been given across the globe, uh, they continue to be extraordinarily safe. It's Doc Talk. It's uh, the middle of October. Uh, and I thank you all for listening. I thank you that we're in the down phase of COVID, it appears, uh, in North America. We need to continue that progress. You all continue to stay safe. Thank you.